Hi everyone, it's Susan and Danny, Lucky Late in Life. Morning. We're in the Lamar Valley, standing, we're about 100 feet off the road. And as you can see, there's a herd of buffalo right beside the, uh, the river right behind us. And uh, we're actually hearing the first airplane I've heard <laughs> in probably four or five days um, flying overhead. But um, just wanted to recap our, our adventure of the last two weeks talk about some of the things that we saw, some of the things we did, and uh, and get get into some of the highlights. So how about, uh, <laughs> go ahead, what, what, what were the highlights? The highlights for me were seeing all the moose. Um, we haven't really had, we hadn't had good luck with that in the past, and we just saw a multitude of moose this trip, large, small, uh, male, female, uh, all beautiful animals. Also, we saw a badger, which was very cool. We had never seen that before here in this valley or any other part of the park. And um, that was kind of exciting to see as well. A badger with two, I don't know if they're cubs, kids, pups, whatever they call them, but uh, with two little ones. And it was really quite a sight. The, uh, the neat thing about seeing the badgers, once we saw them, uh, we learned what to look for. And then later on, we just saw up at Soda Butte, um, we saw the uh, uh, badger with two kits just walking around the sagebrush, all of this, the sage that's everywhere. So that was uh, that was really cool. We uh, we had just walked away from shooting a bald eagle. Um, Susan got some incredible shots of this eagle. You'll see him. I think both of us did very well. It was very exciting too to see last night. We on the way back to our cabin, we saw a uh, black bear sow with two cubs, and we were relatively. Uh, not close, we were still the correct distance away, but we were looking down at them, so the sun was great, uh, the lighting was great, and we, we got some incredible shots of the two cubs with her, and uh, Danny, of course, was in a better position to get a picture of the mom, but it, that was exciting, too, watching them play and uh, chase up and down trees and all of that. That was really cool as well. Uh, just to share our mindset for how we planned out the trip, because we'd been here before, two, two times before, we knew that we liked the Lamar Valley better than the rest of the park. The northern part of the park is, uh, to us, more of what we're looking for. A little less of the thermal features, but a, uh, a lot more of the wildlife that, that we look for every day. And uh, so we planned uh, this trip here. We decided we would stay in Cook City. And by staying in Cook City, what it did for us is we would get up every morning no later than 5 a.m. and would be on the road 5.30, quarter of six, and we would, and, and that was too late, a lot of mornings. And as we would head down the, uh, the road from the northeast entrance, we saw more moose than we'd ever seen in our entire life. We saw bear, we saw both grizzly and black bear up there. We saw um, more fox than we ever would have expected. And, uh, and then we came down into the valley and we just spent we spent the last 10 days, including today, just cruising up and down the valley. We went down into the Hayden Valley three different times, looking for great gray owls. We weren't, it wasn't very productive, but what it was, was just a beautiful ride and, and a very relaxing day. Right, and we did stop and see some of the thermal features, Grand Prismatic Spring. Um, we went to the Overlook and, and, and we took a couple of beautiful shots there. Um, and, uh, it was, it was just a good day. It was a very relaxing day. It was a nice way to end our last full day in Yellowstone. We uh, we do have a big problem. Now we're trying to figure out how we can come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I spoke to a ranger about a job here. Unfortunately, it just won't pay enough. Uh, I give the I give the rangers a tremendous amount of credit. They uh, they deal with crowds, especially around bear jams where there is a large multitude of people that just don't want to be compliant. They want to be very selfish in what they do. And the rangers work very well with them. They're extremely patient, extremely firm, yes. and they push people out of the way. But there are an awful lot of people that are just very, very selfish with their photography. Um, they, uh, they, they need to get closer and closer and closer right. until they, till they what we would call bump the animal or push the animal right. to cause the animal to do something that's that gives them a great shot but puts stress on the animal. 
right. that, the uh, the rangers do a great job at trying to manage that. One thing one thing we should stress though, if you're going to come to Yellowstone, please don't stop in the middle of the road Absolutely. to take your picture. Uh, they do require that you pull off of the road uh, in one of the pullouts or a marked area that has a, like a shoulder, there, there are. and you have to have your car on the inside of the white line. So on the I'm sorry, on the outside of the white line. So you know. A lot of people we found here on this trip, particularly, were just stopping in the middle of the road and uh, blocking traffic both ways, um, you know, and, and just taking their sweet old time getting out of the way. Or, you know, all you have to do is find a pull off, turn around, come back to what you were looking at, or pull off and walk back to what you wanted to see. Um, don't jam up the road. <laughs> the, the other piece of advice that I'd give you even if you're not um, outgoing like both Susan and I are, stop and talk to the people. The people have, uh, have seen different things and they're gonna give you tips, different tips on things that people uh, may not have known. The badger, we wouldn't have known where the badger was, but somebody said, hey, have you seen the badger? And so they, uh, they took us down. They, he uh, um, took us right down to the, uh, to the badger site and we, we sat and we shot the badger from about 25 yards away. And, uh, and that was just fantastic. Um, when we shared, we, we stumbled across a, a sandhill crane, which was, I think, Susan's favorite thing. Of the yeah, year. I really enjoyed watching the, the sandhill crane. Is a, you know, it's a common bird where we live, but the facts uh, that we learned on this trip were more than we ever had known about it. Uh, the sandhill crane um, you know, lays one to three eggs, and they take over a month to incubate. Um, underneath the mother and the father uh, defends the nest and feeds the mother while she's incubating the eggs um, but what we saw when we were here this time is two of the, her eggs hatched uh, she had two healthy looking colts um, when we saw her last and and I choose to <laughs> I choose to remember them that way I don't even want to check on them on the way out because they're very prone to coyote attack and bird attack, and um, that would just break my heart if I saw. <laughs> we we saw we saw it was a very small marshy area where the sandhill crane had made their nest, and we watched a coyote working the marshy area looking for the nest. He came within 20 feet, and that close, 20 feet, and we thought that we were going to see something very bad, and then he turned around and he left, and it was just the mother at the time. We witnessed one other thing. For me, it was very, very special. We hadn't seen the father for several days, and we were worried that he had been um, preyed upon or something had happened to him. And as we were sitting there, we were completely set up. Everything was perfect for us. We had our, our cameras all ready to go. And he came in, and when he comes down to the nest, he's like a parachute. He doesn't flap his wings. He just sort of floats right down these six or seven foot wingspans with these beautiful reds and browns and tans and underneath he's got a little bit of black and white. And he drifted in and he landed and she stood up and she was all excited to see him and she they both did a just a little head bob dance. <laughs> yeah, a little dance, acknowledgement. And, and, uh, <laughs> and the whole time we're watching, I'm sitting there and then I looked at Susan and I said, I hope you got it. And she goes, I hope nope. you got it. <laughs> we, well, that was okay because it was really it. cool to watch. And a short while after he uh, parachuted in, uh, a group of female bighorn sheep came through and he sort of did this big spread of his wings and kind of... Yeah, the ewes were walking... Were, forced them out of the area by flapping his wings uh, and really making himself look big. The poor ewes really were cool just to trying to get a drink. They were walking up to the, uh, the La Marchie area. Nope, and, and no, <laughs> not happening, not like, happening. Nope, go find a different watering hole. Yep. Luckily for them, there, there was another one on the other side, so. <laughs> what else, what else was uh, that highlight? That was cool to see. Um, I, I loved seeing the moose. I honestly go back to the moose again. Just a beautiful, uh, you know, seeing the cow with the calf and um, the bull the, with the, you know, fairly large rack was uh, exciting. We had never seen a bull moose with a rack before not anywhere not even and so Maine. we just were like wow you know just blown away by the beauty of him and just the the 
muscular body on him. It was crazy. Yeah. The, uh, some of the things that are highlights for me, uh, one of the best pictures I took, I'm hoping is, is when it, when we get back and process it, it's going to be as good as I hope, is something that, that probably 90% of the people who come to the park do not spend any time shooting. But, and, and I, you just heard it, it's a raven. There are ravens everywhere. And these ravens are massive. And they're beautiful. They're black and they talk and they're well, interactive. They, they, when the sun hits them, they're iridescent on their wings. And uh, beautiful. They're uh, they're uh, mimics, so you'll hear you'll hear them using different tones and sounding very different. And then other times they sound exactly like you would think a raven would, with just a harsh call. Uh, right. So <laughs> there's there's she just she just can't resist. <laughs> but there's a lot of different things out there. We're we're uh, we sort of ignored the buffalo so far, the bison. We've we've done more with uh, everything with everything else, <laughs> but uh, but it's uh, it's very very exciting. And uh, tell them about the uh, about some of the hikes we did. Oh, okay. So the first hike we did was um, Lost Lake. Lost Lake, and that's from starting at the Petrified Tree, and it's a very short. What about a half mile or a mile? It's probably, uh, it's I think probably it's 0. 0.7, I think it's 0. 0.7 to the lake. Okay, and so, and it's it's a small lake, and you can c continue on, and I think it's a longer hike if you want right. to, but to the lake, about 0. 0.7 miles, um, re really easy hike, no height or no altitude change at all, um, well, and there's uh, a nice little brook that runs along uh, side the path or the trail uh, yeah. to it, which is really beautiful, and there were, we did see quite a few birds in there and some other small little animals. Um, and that was a nice, easy hike for that for our first day. It was a, rather wet. It had rained the day before, so uh, uh, that was why we to, didn't go further. We have to stop this right now, and I'm going to yep. show you why. <laughs> well, hello there. Hello there. But right there, there is a handsome gentleman that is saying to us, I want to be right here. And 25 yards is Probably a little too close. We're going, honey. We're going. He huh. snuck up behind us because I thought I heard him. He, um, Hopefully, you can he still was see down him. Below us, but so he's snuck around us. But oh, we're probably sure. there's your shot, Susan. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down, and as you can see, I'm gonna let you watch him walk on by. This is Yellowstone. This is what it's all about. And he is definitely a big boy. <laughs> it is always important to be aware of your surroundings here in Yellowstone. Uh, and uh, we had the same thing happen with a, with a coyote walked up on us within five feet <laughs> and they matched the ground. But it's just, it's just a spectacular, spectacular day. Well, why don't you come on back in, Susan? <laughs> uh, we changed our vantage point. I'm gonna let Susan walk on the camera before, uh, before I uh, set it up. You're not recording right now, right? I am, oh, I am are? recording. Okay. So, uh, Right about there, Susan. Okay. All right, I'm coming right back. All right. And I'm gonna finish. We'll finish up this video for you. But whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like like we said, that's what's magical about this place is you never know what you're going to see. Around every corner, there's just if it's not landscape beauty, it's it's wildlife beauty. Um, so getting back to our hikes, do we want to? Oh, that's where we were. <laughs> okay, we're so... a little distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so the next hike we did was Specimen Ridge. Right. So we didn't do the whole entire 11 miles or whatever it is of Specimen Ridge, but we did want to see the petrified tree forest. So we did that 
hike, and that was a rather strenuous hike for us as it's an older rated, couple. It's rated strenuous by the uh, okay by the books that we. So it have. starts out relatively flat um, for about a what about a half mile or so, right. and then you hit a tree line, and it's nearly what? How many degrees would you say? Forty-five oh. degrees. Oh, or it's, more? it's not forty-five <laughs> degrees, but it's pretty. It it's is pretty, pretty steep. steep. But it's. Um, it's, it's pretty steep and, and slow going for us. Me, I had to stop every 20 feet or so. Um, and we just went straight to the top, basically. But don't, don't forget to look around the, the perimeter because there are a few scattered petrified trees on your way to the top of the ridge. So For that hike there, um, we did it five years ago, but we also noticed that when we came back this time, the trail had changed slightly. And um, there's a... Right now, there are two down trees on the trail. I'm assuming they're gonna cut openings for it. It's right at a trail junction. So it looks like the trail bears to the left at these fallen trees, right after you come out of the second. We just heard another, another buffalo, and you just gotta be aware. <laughs> and as you come out of the, the second set of trees, as you're going up the slope, um, the trail is, wanna, is going to wanna make you go left. You go right, right there, as you come out of the second set of trees. And the reason you do is there is a very, very cool uh, petrified tree stump that you can stand on. It's right in the middle of the trail. They specifically made the trail walk right over it. There's a there's a there's a thumping over here that uh, that's definitely got us aware. Uh, but the petrified tree, and you look you, when you're standing on it, and you can look down. So this is this remnant of hundreds of thousands of years ago. And you can still see the rings, and the rings have been mineralized, and it's just absolutely spectacular. We'll and, we'll tack on some pictures at the end of our video um, and, uh, <laughs> when we process it. We'll tack some photos that we took along the way. Not of sure. Each hike. Not sure if you can hear it over the cars, or or if it's not quite loud enough. But it sounds like there's five or six buffalo just past this ridge line, wandering down, or, or trotting, this, trotting, or trotting coming down. this way. Um, <laughs> We're, so we're just going to be aware. They, they, we don't want them to come trotting over the hill. That that meander from the last buffalo is fine, but if they come running over, which they sometimes do, we we're, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. Um, we so did, Specimen Ridge was a wonderful hike, and it, it great hike. And uh, you know we tried to time them so early in the morning, so it was before it got too hot. Uh, I think coming out of that, it was about lunchtime, um, so that was good. So we yep. had lunch right in the car and. Uh, you know, and then carried on about our day. Um, it does get hot quick here um, this time of year. Starts out chilly, ends up hot. Sunscreen, um, lip, lip balm. Lip balm, yeah. It's very dry up here. You have to drink a lot of water. Um, we probably did not drink enough water. Yeah. We should, probably should have doubled what we as drank. Much, as much water as, as you can. can. As soon as one is empty, fill it up and get another or open another. Um, we bought a case of water, which we kept in the back of the car for a few days, and it, it really was helpful. Um, so the next hike was? Uh, we did Trout Lake. Trout Lake. That was another, you know, moderate, I would say moderate hike. Uh, a little bit of altitude going in, and then it kind of levels off, and there's a nice trail around the perimeter of the lake. Uh, you do have to be bear aware in there. The further north we went for hiking, um, we found that there, you know, you really had to be aware of your surroundings. There was a lot of scat on the trail, um, but it's beautiful in there. And this we made supposedly, a video. We'll supposedly link it to there this one. there are otters in there when the trout start coming in, um, but we did not see any otters while we were in there. We did see a couple of goose families or duck families, and uh, that was quite nice to see as well. Um, and the hike out was beautiful. It was just gorgeous in there. So the same day that we did Trout Lake. We also did a trail called the Blacktail Trail, and the Blacktail Trail is over a lot of. Um, it's a it's a it's a fairly. It's like a plateau, I think. Yeah, say. it's a plateau, <laughs> and and it it's um, fairly brown and fairly dry, and you, and it's all in direct sunlight. Yeah, so so wear <laughs> wear, you know, again sunscreen and wear a broad a hat that covers your shoulders or whatever. Um, and with that trail there. You hike up and you, and you meet the junction at 0.7 miles of the Rescue Creek Trail. When the Rescue Tree Creek Trail goes left, you go right and you go to campsite 1A1. That's important because 
at Campsite 181, where it's a great place to eat lunch. It's exactly two miles, or almost exactly two miles out from the uh, trailhead. Um, there's a little river running right beside it, but there are um, there's a couple of elk heads that are just sitting there and just absolutely and positively uh, amazing. The rangers uh, have stuck them up against a tree. We'll link some pictures to that as well, or maybe we'll show a little bit of the video that we shot there. And uh, great, great, great hike. You know, two, three hour hikes. That's what we did. We're, 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 we're lucky late in life for a reason. We're getting older, we're a little bit out of shape. And uh, so we did the, we did the easier Speak hikes. Speak for yourself. <laughs> we, we did the hikes that, uh, that we knew that we could manage. Right, both of us could manage, so that's good. Um, we enjoyed them thoroughly and no soreness, which means we did our homework before we got here. <laughs> the, the last thing before we end this video from me, and, and Susan might have a couple of things left, is uh, the one piece of advice that, uh, oh, we didn't even talk about Slough Creek, the, the oh, trail. Oh, the Slough Creek Trail was nice, too. Let's talk about that real quick before you end this. Right, one. right. Go ahead. Tell. Okay, so Slough Creek, we, we actually, that was our longest hike, I think, um, that we did. And, and that was a lovely hike. And the, right at the beginning of that hike is about a, a change of elevation of about 400 feet. So, again, me and my bad lungs, I, you know, struggled with that a little bit. But once I get going and once I get my breath, I'm good. So we went up over the top. Um, four, we went four and a half miles in to Second Meadow. And it was lovely. There were lots of little shaded spots to rest and grab a drink of water. Um, it was just a, a nice, clean path. Second um, Meadow. At Second Meadow, don't stop in the middle. If you're just going to go to Second Meadow, don't go to halfway across. Go all the way to the top where it's just starting to leave Second Meadow because when you turn around and you look back, it's just expansive and beautiful. It's right. tremendous. And so we were taking an actual, we were actually on a road. That trail is a road and so, a working ranch uses it and some private outfitters use it for uh, trail rides for people that hire them to take them through the valleys. So it is beautiful. Horse drawn, um, wagon. Again, you have to be bear aware in there. There's a lot of meadows and a lot of, um, you know, places for bears to be. We did another hike too that we didn't even discuss. <laughs> um, we did Hell Roaring Creek. <laughs> and Hell Roaring Creek, we, we got our first bear aware experience. Right. Uh, and uh, again, we'll link that video is, into this uh, so that you'll, you'll be able to see it. But my last point that, that I, was, I was going to say is, get off the road. Everybody goes on the road. There are plenty of hikes, no matter what shape you're in, there are plenty of hikes to get out there and do things and get off the road. And the reason why that's important is very quickly, you have solitude. You have this, this incredibly peaceful area with, uh, you know, we hiked, we hiked on Memorial Day weekend and we saw five people or, or in one hike, we didn't see anybody. The, uh, the Blacktail Trail. We saw nobody. It's um, it's not in any of the books that we had, and we just we were talking to a couple of people. They told us we had to do it, and it was worth it. The uh, Hell Roaring Creek is a very popular trail because of the suspension bridge. It's a cool little suspension bridge. Um, it's 600 feet of elevation change on the way back after you're already tired. So keep be aware of that. Yeah. But get off the trails, get off the roads, and get onto the trails. Right. And, uh, and I, I mean, it's true that you can see a lot from your car, but to be out in it is spectacular. I mean, we just loved being out in it. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, the beauty. I don't know. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Today's our last day. We're heading down to Jackson, and then we're heading to Salt Lake City tomorrow to fly out. Um, yep. That's and, it for and me. That's it. And we had a great time. And we hope that you'll get out there and try it yourselves. We're uh, Danny and Susan from Lucky Late in Life. Thank you very much. Yep. <laughs> and uh, see you on the trails. Take care. Oh, you can edit that last bit out. <laughs> right? Edit out. <laughs>